Thank you for tuning in to The Melissa Show. This episode will feature DJ, actor, model, black belt, and more, Kevin Crown. Coined as a natural-born club killer for his unique ability to keep the crowd engaged and mesmerized, leaving his audience in awe. He prides himself on his desire to simply be the best, and that is showcased through his consistent delivery of an authentic experience at events around the world. Kevin Crown, the natural born club killer. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the Lisa show. No problem. I appreciate you coming and we spoke, you just came from New York. Yes. Born mm-hmm. and raised there. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that. How did how was that? How was mm-hmm. that experience? So um first generation growing up in uh, in New York in America. My my family, my entire family, born and raised in Grenada. Okay. My older sister, Sherry, was actually born in Grenada. And when I was um, when I was conceived, my parents took up and came to America to give me obviously a better chance. Whatever. Mm-hmm. So I was the first born mm-hmm. in America, straight in America. Yeah. Um, but I grew up in a Caribbean household. Okay. You know, yeah. uh, my whole my cousins, my everything was Caribbean, Grenadian. You know, so. Uh, you know, definitely grew up with the Caribbean experience in America. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the, the culture, the music, you know, the, the, the smells, the, the accents is definitely something. The food, yes, yes, all of it. Yeah. Love that. Mm-hmm. When you look at your current craft, you yes. know, being a DJ, not even, that's just one thing, everybody. Mm-hmm. But all the things that you're currently doing, mm-hmm. talk about the influence that your family and your culture has had on that. Well, you know, because my, my family, you know, came from another country, you know, um, immigrants, you know, they had to work very hard, yeah. you know, um, watching my mother and my father go to work seven days a week, um, create businesses, um, you know, um, buy properties, provide a life for my brothers and my sisters, you know, my uh, aunts and uncles doing the same thing. It kind of instilled a different kind of work ethic in me. Mm-hmm. Um, where, you know, when you, when you grow up, you, 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 as a child, you think everybody grows up the same way Mm -hmm. and you don't really understand that, you know, people grow up different and the way they grow up kind of impacts how they are as adults. So my worth ethic is like, it's insane. It's, uh, it's always work first, Mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, some people prioritize going on vacations and. You know, leisure, there's none of that for me. No. You know, I've seen 90%, 95% of the places I've gone in the world is because of work. Yeah, all business focus. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously you have I times I the where, same. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, my, my world experience is all because of my, my, my music. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's great. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that you can't put a price tag on, that, that mindset. Because really, when you're working for yourself mm-hmm. and you're an entrepreneur, it's good in the fact you don't have to answer to nobody. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when you don't have to answer to nobody, sometimes you just stay in bed. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? It's really up to you and how you it's, feel when you're... Right. So sometimes we, we have a, you put a deadline on yourself. You're like, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Whereas when you're working for somebody, you can't. Yeah. So, you know, if, you're, if you have discipline and you can focus, it's great. But, you know, there's times where you can't. So it's like a... Plus minus thing. Can you describe some of that, those motions that you've gone through when you're going through the entrepreneurial journey and oh, wow. the mental uh, aspect to it too? All right. So, um, you know, growing up Caribbean, you know, my, my parents were really trying to hear DJing uh, music as, as a, a career, yeah. as a career, as a career. Yeah. Yeah, how you gonna make money? You know, was, you know, and I, me as a kid, you know, I didn't even really know. I just knew that's what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I think back then, uh, I don't think it was as easy to make money um, as a DJ as it is now. Mm-hmm. But I, it's just something I wanted to do. So I, I went to school. I actually graduated high school at 16. I was in college at 16. I didn't really do much. That 16-year-old me, yeah. you know, um, class-wise and ap- academic-wise, but my DJ experience, that's when I first got into radio was the college radio at 16. Um, you know, making my first mixtapes, um, playing some of my first college parties, introduced to that college crowd was all there. But then um, maybe two years after that, um, I applied for trade school. Okay. No, no, a year after that, yeah. I applied for trade school and I didn't get accepted until about five years. Mm-hmm. So at 22, 
I started my electrical apprenticeship okay. and I, I completed it and I became a full fledged electrician. Wow. So I was I wasn't an electrician by trade. I have a, a degree in labor studies and a degree in science. And I, um, you know, I was an electrician for many years and I was kind of burning the candle at both ends. So I would DJ, go to school, I would, hustle. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was a lot. And then, uh, you know, one day I made the decision to stop, to to quit and put it all on the line. Bet on yourself. And I and I, I bet on myself. And I always knew I had to make that decision. And it's funny, this this my first year as an uh, 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 electrician, maybe my first three months, I met this individual. His name was Bobby. Okay. This was on a bridge. We worked on a bridge. I was actually under the bridge okay. um, for a year. Through the winter, to the fall, through the summer, uh. rain, snow. We was outside. People say Toronto winter is bad, but New York is just as harsh. Nah, y'all got it. I, <laughs> y all, y all, I was there it. in 2013, I, and I was like, this is so bad. I know this is no, a long time ago. It, no, okay, okay, I, okay. I, would, I would say Toronto winter is a little bit. Okay, yeah, okay, I guess you are outside. Yeah, but, but, okay, yes, so, <laughs> you're outside. So I didn't understand it at the time. You know, the young, the young me, the 22-year-old me, or 23, what I was, wherever I was, he told me, Kevin, one day you're going to have to make a decision whether you want to be a DJ or electrician. And I thought he was, I, I, I thought he was telling me something bad. I thought he was hated. Yeah. For many years, I thought he was hated. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as I started getting uh, more uh, popular, I started realizing, yo, one day you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to choose. So because, um, you, know, when, you know, when I was first going to, 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 to carnivals, and DJing, I was still working. Mm -hmm. And you know, carnivals are pretty much year round. Oof. So, um, you know, rest in peace to my, my grandfather. My grandfather passed away in 2001. Sorry about that. But, you know, he was like 80, 80 something years old. You know, a good he, life. Yeah, you know, he passed away. Rest in peace to my grandfather. But I use that excuse maybe like six times. You know, my grandfather died, yeah. I gotta go, Grenada. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I use that over and over again to get out of work. You Just know, um, and then, um, you know, I, I got hurt, you know, I got injured a lot. So I used my injuries to, to go and work as comp mm -hmm. for extended amount of time mm -hmm. where I wasn't working for a while. And then I was just DJing. And then, you know, one day I, uh, I was, um, I DJed in Cancun, Mexico, okay. 7,000 people, wow. 16 events in four days. Wow. Right. Yeah. So from Thursday till about Monday, wow. I left on Tuesday. Went to work on Wednesday. You know, I, I went, you know, my boss was like, what you doing here? I thought you was gonna come in tomorrow. I said, nah, I thought I had to come to work. Mm -hmm. Trying to be that good guy. Yeah. You know, I um, was so tired. And at this point in my life, I wasn't using public transportation. I'm a little bougie. Yeah. <laughs> I drive every yeah. day I go. I don't use buses or no. trains. Yeah. I, I'm a little bougie. I'm so my bougie self drove to work. So I'm driving home and I'm so tired, I doze off at the wheel. And I run into the back of this guy's car. He had his family in the car. Mm -hmm. And I was just a fender bender, and it was an old car. It was one of those box Maximas. Yeah. It was kind of already, his bumper was kind of already scratched got up. It, got it. But he, you know, he was, he had the upper hand because I, I did hit him in the back. It was, mm -hmm. wasn't nothing crazy, but I think I reached into my pocket, I had $500 cash on me. I gave it to him. Please don't call the police. You know, I had a, at the time, I think I had an Audi A6. My bad. All right. Bad white energy. Audi, yeah. white, yeah. white Audi A6, big grill. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I didn't really, you know, nothing happened, but, you know, I gave him the money and I drove home and I was sitting on my bed and I thought about it and it was, I was cringing. You know, everybody talks about cringy stuff. I was cringing because I'm like, yo, I could have, I could have, I could have hurt this guy or his family. Or if he wasn't there, I could have went across the intersection. I could have got hit by a bus. I could have hit somebody, a pedestrian. Mm -hmm. I could have ran over a kid. You know, I could have lost my life or taken somebody's life mm -hmm. just because I was tired. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, she was, uh, she was one month old at the time. And uh, I called my boss. Same boss that said, yo, I um, thought you going to come to work. The next day, I said, yo, I'm taking a uh, paternity leave. And I never went back to work. That was my last day of work ever. Never went back. 
I said, first I took paternity leave, then I took like a family leave of absence, uh-huh. and then I just stopped going. Never, I never went back. And, uh, you know, that year, um, you know, everything changed. And it was like, I, I, you know, I was always me. Mm-hmm. I always had the energy. You know, I think um, as somebody who does something creative, I think every year you're doing it, you should get better. Yeah. So I think obviously I'm a better entertainer than I was back then. Yeah. But I was, I was good. Yeah. You know, back then. Yeah. But, um, you know, when, when doing it and I, you know, I, I took that leap of faith. Um, it's like the universe, you know, whoever it is, the higher power, whatever you want to call it. It was like, yo, he's ready. And, you know, everything got aligned. And for like three years, every single stage I touched, every single time it was time to uh, show up, it was just magic. You know, it's like, um, you know, I'll be real with you. As an entertainer, you know, we, we have our bad days. It doesn't show, but... Every, every, every artist, every DJ, every comedian, every singer, every, everybody who does something... We're human. We're human. We, we're human. Athletes, we have our off days. Yeah. But for like three years, I didn't have none of those. Okay. Every set was just phenomenal. And it was... Uh, it was just like, yo, people were like, who is this guy? And I was doing it so long. Yeah. I've been DJing since I'm 12. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've been outside DJing since I'm 15. Mm-hmm. So me, grown Kevin, you know, people don't know how long you've been doing something. They, they, when they first see you, it's like you just appeared. Yeah. And I appeared to such a, such, such a vast, you know, uh, part of the world. It was like, yo, this guy is just different mm-hmm. from everybody. Mm-hmm. And, um... You know, it it just developed into something that's just like phenomenal now for me. You know, at this point in my career, because I'm really, you know, at the top of the echelon of uh, entertainers in my field, and it's it's, it's just a great feeling. You know, yes. You mentioned so much there, and thank you for sharing that entire story. It's it's cool, man. I want to know those injuries. Were they coming from your taekwondo? Or Um, no, no. Well, so. My first major injury was, was this right here. Okay. It was, um, I was stabbed. Yeah, I was stabbed okay. and uh, my radial nerve was severed. Wow. So this right here is just the surgery. They opened, all this is like the staples. They opened up my arm. So this is just this right here. But what happened was, um, you know, I was still working at the time, mm-hmm. but uh, I was still DJing to compensate. Mm-hmm. You know, um, West Indian, we never just do one thing. Yeah. You know, we got plenty, plenty going on. We got a lot of little (laughs) jobs going on, you know? So I had my DJ equipment in my truck. Yeah. And I did a gig and I didn't take it out. I left it in the truck. And I didn't park my car. When I parked, I didn't park my truck in the garage. It was on the street. And, you know, somebody broke into my truck and stole my DJ equipment. Um, And, you know, I try to be a detective and I try to figure out who it was. I called the police, but they was like, you know, I tracked it down to, they saw him bring it into this building. Mm-hmm. They said, well, we can't go into every apartment to uh, find who it is. So if you see him, let us know. Okay. So I tracked him down, figured it out, I found out who he was, found out where he was, because I had paid some people, when you see him, let me know. And they told me what apartment we, he was in, got the apartment, got him out the apartment. My plan was when he came, Outside, I was going to call the cops and say, I got the guy. Not what happened. So it was me and my two friends. One of the guys was outside. It was me in the front, the guy in the middle of us, and my boy in the back. So we go downstairs, elevators, everything's fine. And you, we go, to, you know, the, 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 the corridor where you ring the bell and when you're outside. So we was in there. It's tight space. And some said, Kevin, turn around. And when I'm turning around, this guy's swinging at me, you know, and I didn't even have time to like think. I just reacted and I blocked, you know, but (laughs) what I thought was a punch was actually a knife. So I didn't even see the knife. It's probably it's probably good that I didn't see the knife because maybe what I would have froze. Maybe I would have backed up because I didn't see the knife. I just blocked and uh, the knife went into my arm, got a sharp pain in my arm. And I realized it was the biggest kitchen knife in the set. He had, while I was in the elevator, while we were talking, and I guess in his mind, he thought, yo, these guys are going to do something to me. I had no intention of causing this guy, not even my laptop, my DJ equipment. equipment. I just wanted 
my stuff back. I had no malicious intent. Yeah. And it, in retrospect, if I was thinking, you know, more more street smart and more malicious, I probably wouldn't have got stabbed, but I probably would have winded up in jail. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, my radial nerve was served, was severed, and the radial nerve is is in charge of bringing your wrist, moving your thumb, and um, uh, uh, closing your fingers. Okay. No, opening your fingers. Opening your fingers. Okay. So this is your radial nerve. Yeah, yeah. All of that is your radial. You moving your nerve, your thumb, and opening your fingers, right? So all I had, I could go like this. I could go like this. That's all I had. So Wait, can you compare the two? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you can see it. Or right, you yeah, can see. Yeah, you yeah, can, look, you see, look, you see that? Yeah, yeah. Now look here. Oh, we're restricted. You, you see, yeah, you see that? You see the restriction? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. It's for the rest of my life I'm gonna have that restriction. That's fine. But, so so yeah. so 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 after that, you know, every he told, the doctor told me, he said, don't drink, don't smoke, because that impedes the the the, the growth of the nerve. The nerve has to grow back. From your elbow all the way, all the way. It had to grow back. Wow. And it grows very, very minute every day. So he said, you're going to heal, but we don't know how you're going to heal. So I had a wrist strap. I didn't know how it was. Because if you ever see somebody like this, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, wrist strap. Okay. So I had that. So every day I used to wake up and say, try to move. And a matter of fact, when he took the, uh, the, um, the cast off, he told me move. I couldn't. Sure. I was like, yo move and I couldn't I couldn't do anything and I cried I, you know it was very emotional mm-hmm. and um I couldn't move I was like I was broken right. and then uh you know every day I wake up and I would try to move my thumb and it wouldn't move you know and uh on my birthday I said thumb move and it said like this a little bit I said, oh. and I and I, I had did martial arts when I was a teenager but I had stopped Okay. You know, I had so many things going on. I was an electrician. I was, you know, I was a dancer. I was a DJ. Everything. I had so much things going on, so I stopped the martial arts. Okay. When my thumb started moving, I went back. I went to the school, and I, at the time, um, there was a different uh, master mm-hmm. of the doje, you know, um, there. And they said, you, you can start. You can start tomorrow. I said, no, I'm going to start today. And I, I went for seven or eight months. Call it seven months straight. Mm-hmm. Six days a week, three hours a day. Wow. And I got my first black belt. Wow. Uh, I went on to become an instructor. Okay. I went on to show my daughter. She became a second degree black belt. Today I'm a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo. Wow. I'm a fourth degree black belt. Um, you know, um, it's, uh, I think that's, that, you know, um, experience actually prepared me. For just life in general, mm-hmm. but the uh, you know the de- dedication, the perseverance, you know, in doing martial arts and overcoming that is kind of something where I kind of apply to everything I went through mm-hmm. as just you know a, a, a creative, because you could be amazing at something, it doesn't mean you're gonna be able to make a business out of it That's or true. be successful at it. Yeah. You can be great, right? You can be like that person can sing. Well, that person can draw. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you're going to be able to live off mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. And that's just, just the way it goes. Yeah, as any artist, as any creator, like, right. we just have so much on our minds that right. we want to do so much at right. once. And then it's like, well, can we make it a business? Can we monetize right. it? And, and then as a creative, you like, people don't understand creatives that, you know, like, if you have a regular job, mm-hmm. when you clock out, that job is done. Mm-hmm. As a creative, when you perform, when you're done, you're still processing everything. everything, the good moments, the bad moments, what you can fix. So some people don't understand that, you know, if Kevin is disconnected or Kevin is silent, he's not upset at you. He's just in his own head mm-hmm. as a creative and only creatives get that. Yes. So, you know, being around us, you know, I've been told, you know, I'm moody mm-hmm. and, I'm, 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 and, I, and I'm like, you know what? It's really, it's not has, about you. it has nothing to do with you. Yeah. You know, I'm just, and then as, as a performer, because it's, it's, it's different, you can be a creative and you can make all the mistakes and then the final product, you show everybody, yeah. like a song. Mm-hmm. You can be in a studio for a month mm-hmm. doing a song. It's sounding bad, it's sounding this, out of two, you fix it, you present a song, it's magic. A DJ, we're performing in front of people. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we practice, yeah, we think, but 
the performance, the real show is in front of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. So if you mess up, you mess up in front of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. If you do good, you're in front of thousands of people. So that in itself is, I, I tell people, um, you know, sometimes I actually see myself. Like I come out of my body and I watch myself on stage when I get in my zone and I'm on autopilot and I'm watching myself. And I'm, a, I'm fully aware of everything that I'm doing, everything that I'm saying, when I'm turning, when I'm, even when it looks like I'm, I'm, I'm falling off the stage and I'm like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all like on autopilot. Huh. And, um, you know, I've been told, and I, and, and I knew it was good because I, I was told this by my peers. Now, if your peers tell you something, like if your peers, like I remember a DJ told me, yo, I got goosebumps watching you on stage and I'm like a DJ I ain't gonna tell no other guy yeah, yeah, a DJ's yeah. not gonna say that <laughs> yeah. unless it's true and I'm like what? yeah you're like me too <laughs> that, sh that shows how you yeah know. so but I'm like it's you know and you know then then you get a artist telling you yo you're not a DJ man you're an artist man yeah. you're not a you're not you're not you're, you're, more you're than past just, DJ yeah. and I've been told this you know um, I've been told this like like Kerwin mm -hmm. Kess um, Farmer Nappy Wow. You know, he, he they, they, they've all told me, and many, you yeah. know, many artists have told me, you know, I see an artist in you, like, mm -hmm. and you know, um, and that's pretty much why I never put DJ in front of my name. It's mm -hmm. not DJ Kevin Crown. It's no, just it's Kevin Crown. Kevin Crown. There's a multitude of, of things. Yeah, you know? man. It's, I feel uh, the same. Like I yeah. feel like that's where my direction is. Well, I'm just, I'm Melissa. Mm -hmm. Melissa yeah, Hernandez. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't kind of, yeah. and, and no disrespect to, mm -hmm. to guys who say DJ. Yeah. But the, I think I'm I'm more than just a DJ. No, you and are. I, I'm yeah. a, and I'm a very good DJ. You know, yeah, I, I of could. Course. I yeah. could. That's why you are where you are. Right now. Yeah, yeah, you know, as in, in in you know, I could. I can't. The art of mixing and blending, I love that. Mm -hmm. But you know, I you're more I, than that. I'm more than There's that. There's so yeah. much more to that. Yeah, yeah, multifaceted. Yeah. And speaking of which, mm -hmm. we were just speaking on your course. Yes. As, for DJing. Right. So. Tell us more about that. So um. I think the uh, the measure of of somebody is how well they can teach what they know. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that are great at, great at what they do, but can't teach it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And taking martial arts, my grandmaster, Grandmaster King, he told me something, and he tells us this. And he said, when you're a champion, when you're pursuing that championship, you have to be selfish. You have to work on you. You can't worry about anybody else when you're pursuing that. But after you get that championship and you're ready to become a master, a master creates champions. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to, everything you learned about being a champion, you now have to redistribute it to everybody to create champions. Yeah. So, you know, with my course, I feel like, I, I, you know, I feel like as a DJ, I don't really have anything to prove. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a DJ, you, you want to prove to the world that I'm a DJ. You know, I, I am actually a DJ. I deserve to be a DJ. You know, and then you want to prove how good you are. Then you you you, you want to prove to yourself. You you when you go when you when all the lights are gone and you're reliving those moments. We cause the, we relive the bad and the good moments in our head. Of course. When we're like we're like wow we relive oh, yeah. yo that forward was crazy yo, yo that, that yeah. oh, or oh I messed up that mixer oh, oh I, I you know I, I chose that song and everybody just looked at me like I was stupid, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you so you relive, you relive these things, and you know, and um, you know, being able to teach that is 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 why I developed this course, and it, it came around during the pandemic. Okay. You know, it was like I need I need to I need to figure something out. Figure something out. Yeah. And you know, um, me and a good friend of mine, we came up with uh, science of sounds. Okay. And I actually did a whole Zoom meeting and was going to launch it. But while I was the SOS, <laughs> and while I was launching it, I I uh, I was streaming, and the morning show took off, and it was like Science of Sounds morning show, and I kind of back in that balance I put team. the yeah. Science of Sounds in the 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 back the, burner, the back burner mm -hmm. and I uh I I went full steam ahead with streaming and my streaming journey. But in doing so, you know, over it's going on twenty twenty four be four years. I learned so much more about myself as an entertainer and as a, as a, as a, you know, as streaming and, you know, I even, you know, people said it, but I actually realized like, uh, um, 
how funny I was, like as a <laughs> as a like as a personality. Yeah, you have a personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, you do it. Yeah. But it's always like DJ bass. Mm -hmm. the, the music is the punchline. Got it. You know, so you say something and the music ties together and it's ah. But you know, I started doing it where I started just speaking and you, people were like yo, you mad funny. <laughs> And you know, I, I it was a it was a couple of times where I actually did um um some some jokes on, on a comedy show. Okay. You know, shout out to the Ubisoka family. They had a comedy show and they said, Kevin, we, mm -hmm. we want you to host it. And what I knew about hosting comedy shows, you can't deal with it like a DJ because DJing is people standing up mm -hmm. and dancing. What I know about a, a, a comedy show you can't tell jokes to people standing up they have to sit down yeah. when they're sitting down they pay more attention to you hmm. and there's no music you know so you know I just started really to engage I, 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 I use the same timing and delivery and you know cadence and you know work in the stage but I used it as a kid and it worked hmm. and people I remember the comedians the promoters when I came off the stage they just looked at me like, wow, what the hell did you just do? And I was just like, and then I, I looked back at the video and I was like, whoa. Everyone's, and then, yeah. you know, I thought it was a one-off, but then I, I was doing it every day on my morning show. Oh. Dressing up in characters, you know, just, just, just making up stuff, making up silly songs, silly phrases. for And, and you know, it was like, yo, you, you learned something about yourself. And then, you know, that... You know, you you developed a, a a following, a community. You know, you start keeping events, and uh, I just kept my uh, birthday party last week. Mm -hmm. You know, we had like two thousand people. Happy belated birthday! Thank you so much. And um, you know, so, somebody came to me again. He said, "Yo, that's not that's not normal, bro. That's not normal in this in this in this yeah. day and age in this economy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, getting two thousand people to pay to come to your event is phenomenal. Major. And I thank everybody who who supports me." You know, and I, I, I've I, I've revisited the uh, the course because I realized in talking to DJs, because DJs call me and you know ask me things, and a lot of people don't know, you know, um, what it takes, and uh, a lot of people are under the impression because I, you know, I can uh, I have the skills, mm -hmm. you know, I know how to mix, I know how to scratch, I could put two records together, you know, I have a laptop, I'm good, and I deserve to be on these stages, yeah. not realizing you don't deserve anything. Mm -hmm. In this business, is nobody's gonna give you what you deserve. Mm -hmm. you, you have to work to, to get there, and you have, to, um, you have to be a commodity. Somebody has to be able to see, I can make money if I put this guy on stage. Yeah. It's not he doesn't deserve it, he is an asset. Yes. It's not about deserving, you gotta be an asset to somebody. If I put Kevin Crown on the stage, I'm gonna get in, return on my investment. Mm -hmm. So you, I'm gonna teach these uh, up and coming DJs or, or seasoned DJs or up and coming artists, seasoned artists, how to turn yourself into an asset, how to monetize your passion. Mm -hmm. So I think I've done that, um, you know, many times over and it's, you know, it's time to share. Yes. You know, time to share. How do you say you share that with your daughter currently and, and oh, man. your way of, of being a father? Well, I think as a as a parent, you got to understand kids, you know, will remember what you say and it will it will it, they will comprehend it when they comprehend it. Yes. So sometimes you say things, but like my mother used to tell me things and then when I understood it, if it was 10, 15, sometimes you don't understand things until you become a parent yourself. Mm -hmm. But it comprehends. So sometimes you got to plant the seed in their heads and let them know about things like I tell my um, my nieces, my nephews, my daughters, you got to do what you have to do now, so you could do what you want to do later. Hmm. You understand? You have to go to school. Mm -hmm. Do what you have to do. You have to be good in school. Yeah. Do what you have to do, so you can do what you want to do later. Because I'm doing what I want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? But before, when I was working, I was doing what I had to do. I had to wake up when they told me to. When if I had to be at work at seven o'clock, I had to wake up at five o'clock, leave house at six or five forty-five mm -hmm. to get there at seven. You, you work, you get your 15 minute break, you get your lunch break, you, you have to hide to be on the phone, you have to explain if you go into the bathroom, you, and then they tell you, well, there's no work for you for the next three months. Yeah. We'll call you back. 
Sometimes that three months or six months or seven months or two weeks or whatever it was. Well, you were on their schedule, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, you had to be on their schedule. Now I'm on my schedule, you know, so I did what I have to do, but now I'm doing what I want to do. But I understand it now because I'm doing what I want to do. Yeah. So sometimes you, you know, as a parent, you know, as a parent, kids make mistakes uh, just like everybody, everybody else. else yeah. And, you know, you got to allow your kids a safe space to make some mistakes. You gotta let them know. Obviously, listen, you're you know you messing up, mm -hmm. but you know I'm not gonna give up on you. I'm not gonna stop being your father because you made a mistake, and you know mistakes are lessons. Yeah. And no matter what, you could try to say, listen, I made those mistakes. I don't want you to make those mistakes. But in saying that, they're not learning that lesson. Right. So. Some people who, you, you know, they have to go through it to actually understand it. Yeah. So you kind of look and say, yo, if you walk down there, you're going to slip and fall. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to do it. It's, like, it's, like, yeah. it's like ice. You don't see yeah. ice. but No, there's ice there. I don't see the ice. Mm -hmm. If you go, you're going to slip and fall. I don't see it. And then, you, then they slip and fall. Like, oh, damn. That's what he's talking about. Sure. So Let's sometimes you got to just... Allow them to slip and fall, you know, hopefully they don't, right. don't break nothing. They don't, you know, it's not a life-changing mistake. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, so my, uh, my journey, you know, I, I'm trying to share my journey, share my story, you know. But obviously, you know, who's willing to learn and who's willing to go through the, uh, the, the steps and really put the work. You guys can be successful, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Maybe not become a Kevin Crown, but I don't. My my course is not to show you how to be the next Kevin Crown. It's how to be the best you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's that's the key. I think you know when you think about it like that, you you no longer mm -hmm. look at uh, other other creatives as competition. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we we're allowed to exist because you know um, in my uh, field there are so many great entertainers and mm -hmm. DJs. That I don't, I don't look at as competition. Nor, obviously, we have a competitive spirit. Yeah. If somebody's on stage and yo, he's killing it, yo, I'm not. I gotta kill it too. But it's not like I wanna, I wanna, wanna. Um, I'm, I'm mad at them. Yeah. You know, I'm not competing with them. There's no. You know, I wanna be yeah. the best that I could be. So you know, it's 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 it's, it's great. It's a great. It's a great, it's a, to, to, to look at the world from this space is great. And I want to, um, I want to just share, yeah. you know, I want to share where I'm here. That's my legacy, you know? And you've really touched and through your journey, been around the world. You know, we talk about yeah. the travel. I, I know you had some stuff going on in, in Jamaica, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Union Club Killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear more about that. Oh, so well, um, so it's, it's funny, right? It's because uh, a lot of people know me for being the, uh, the big uh, guy in Soka. Yes. You know, one of the, you know, one of the premier MCs and, you know, DJs and, you know, DJ slash MC in, in Soka. But, um, you know, I was heavy in the dance world. And I still kind of am. I still love my dance hall. Oh. And I still, I still dance. And, you know, the, you know, people who know me, you know, Kevin still loves. I don't, I don't um, split up the genres and say, you know, because I love Soka, I no longer love dance hall. Mm -hmm. I think it's foolishness. Yeah. You know, I think it's, I think it's. Complete rubbish, you know. Uh, you know, there's space for for, every. for everything, mm -hmm. and um, I love soca. I've studied it. I defend it. I love dance hall. I've studied it and I've defended it. So I, uh, before I was well known, world renowned in soca, I was well known in dance hall music. Okay. And I've been to Jamaica so many times. I've, you know, I've had relationships and interactions with some of the greats, and. Um, you know, people used to look at. They used to think, think I was from Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the rumor was he was Jamaican, yeah. because I was very good mm -hmm. at dance hall and the way. You know, when you speak on the mic, yep. you know, you put on the, the a accent. Little patois, little yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I, I was very good at it. Yeah. And people, I guess, people felt like because I was so good, I was from Jamaica, mm -hmm. and because that, then I couldn't know soca, but I actually grew up to soca, and soca music was the first music that I actually DJed. But, um, you know, being from Grenada, 
you know, our music wasn't that accepted worldwide mm -hmm. the way it is now. It was, mm -hmm. you know, people it say it wasn't produced well. It was savage music. You know, they, were, you know, they didn't want to hit a jab. Every the jab, jab, yeah. They didn't back then. They yeah. didn't. They, it wasn't. It it's was too aggressive. It was too aggressive. Yeah. You know, it wasn't. You know, yeah. it, it 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 wasn't. It was for just Grenadians. But you know, I got accepted playing dance on music. But I curated the soca music. I always had it, mm -hmm. and I would party. I would go to the soca parties, but I never got a chance to actually play it myself. Mm -hmm. um, or if I played it, it'd only be like 15, 20 minutes in a party. Yeah. Then you know, back to that. But um, I always had it, and um, you know, when I got the chance, I actually got the chance in Jamaica. Yeah. Did you sell? Saw me uh, playing a club. Okay. That I had a residency at, mm -hmm. and they heard me play soca because it was carnival time. And it was like, yo. We want him on our truck. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did it two years in a row and, you know, was killed it. Then a, a promoter in Barbados saw me um, and they craved the band. Yes. They, uh, they, they brought me to Barbados. Okay. And the DJs said, what the hell is Kevin Crown doing here? And, you know, I would say naturally you get better at something doing it. So I wasn't how I am now, mm -hmm. but I was... Um, I got the door, I got my foot in the door. And when I got my foot in the door, I, I started traveling and I started going to islands like St. Vincent and St. Lucia. And you know, I've been to the Virgin Islands, yeah. Dominica, I've been to St. Croix, I've been to Martinique. And you know, obviously you go to Trinidad. Yeah. And the first time I went to Trinidad, I just went. Uh, I hopped on a flight and I just went. And I, I, I got to go to a lot of parties mm -hmm. for free just based on my appearance. I just looked like somebody. And maybe people knew who I was. Yeah. So they just let me in. Yeah. I'm talking about all inclusive big fets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't on the cast. I was just and I would just look. I was like, yo, okay, this is what this is about. And I was like, oh, and I could do that. Yeah. And then I was like, I could actually do better than that. Mm -hmm. And then I said, oh, all right. And then uh I think the next year I was in Trinidad and I, I you know, I got, I got a spot on Tribe and, okay. you know, uh, Private Ryan put me on Soka Brainwash in Trinidad and just, you know, working with Private Ryan is just like one of those things that, you know, even that made me a better uh, entertainer because before working with Private Ryan in particular, when I was, when I would MC, it was always about what, what the next song was. Right, so I had to know what the next song was. So when I'm working by myself, obviously I know. When working with a DJ, you peek over the laptop or he would whisper to you. Mm -hmm. Working with Private Ryan that first time, he was like 10 feet in the air. So I didn't know what he was playing. Yeah. So that was a little, that was kind of awkward for me the first time. But then I had to realize, you know what? Instead of being ahead of the moment, because when you're DJing, you think in 10 songs ahead. He's thinking 10 songs ahead. But I said, I'm going to be in the moment with the crowd and connect with the crowd and just trust that me and him are on the same musical wavelength. Okay. And then, you know, when I started connecting with the crowd, it didn't matter what he played. So sometimes when Ryan plays something, when he catches the crowd, he's catching me and we have the same reaction. Synchronicity. Yeah. So in, instead of like talking, I'm giving him action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I'm like, yo, he's surprising me the same way they're surprising them. So we're actually in the moment together. But then sometimes we kind of, you know, we have kind of have like a kind of semi broken routine where I know these two songs are coming. I say, yo, I need uh, 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 right now. And obviously we know how to deliver it because it's going on. So over, over, it's going on six, seven years now. Wow. That's working nice. with him, yeah. working with him, we kind of had that synergy that's, yeah. that's like, amazing like people like when i tell people kevin crown and private ryan you know the more people the better we become like it's it's crazy we share a brain and it's been like that ever since the first time we worked together hmm. you know it was it was crazy so you know private ryan you know putting me in that crowd it, it kind of you know people saw that yo this guy is uh he's different yeah you know and you know i've, I've been able to uh you know hone that into something special and uh it's 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 kind of it's kind of still going mm -hmm. it's still going i want to i want to keep going with it
and dive more into some of the the carnival experiences that you've had in these different islands and oh yeah we've been we've been, been to pretty much every yeah. every one I, I, you know uh people always people say you've been to brazil i've never been to brazil yeah oh, you know I've, uh, brazil is a, a, a whole I've different never been, game yeah. i've never been to brazil but you know as far as trinidad grenada saint lucia um um um, um saint vincent barbados uh i've been to bermuda you know the carnivals in in, in america um you know, Carabana, um, Notting Hill, mm -hmm. you know, we've done it all. And um, I think, you know, as a Caribbean DJ, it's very important to go and experience these things. Even if you're not working, mm -hmm. go, go and see why the patrons love this, this music so much. Go to St. Lucia and, 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 you know, just don't say Denry. Figure out what Denry is. Yep. Understand what the sound is. And it, it's 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 to the point now. You play a song for me, I could tell you where it's from. Yep. You got to be able to listen to to, to especially soca, so much different genres, and scene. listen and know. Okay, this is that's that's Grenadian. That's Bayesian. Mm -hmm. This is this is this is. You may not be able to say okay, this is the, you know what island is from, but you're not yeah. small island. You know what yeah, I mean? That's small island. That's small. That's That's, 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 that's Bouillon. Yeah. yeah. You know that's Jap, that's Denny, yeah. that's Bashman. Bash, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? This is this is this is groovy. You know what I mean? And it, this is this is Trinidad. You know Trinidad has some of the sweetest groovy. Barbados has great groovy, but they have the Bashman as well. You know, um, every every island has a little bit of groovy, a unique sound, a yeah. unique sound. But it's it's when you start realizing and learning it in its totality, it 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 it, it, it arms you. Mm -hmm. It gives you like like after. You, you you go through the gauntlet of going through from from June to those two months June well, well end of June July and August you go through that gauntlet you come back you're a superhero mm -hmm. because you know everything yeah you know everything you go to you you went to St Lucia you went to St Vincent you went to Barbados you know what I mean you went to Grenada mm -hmm. and you 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 master all those things when you come back you're like a literal superhero yeah and the DJs is like yo no I need to get ready for uh, Miami Carnival. Like get ready, ha 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 ha, and they're looking at you. You're like, yo, and then obviously you get to you get to um do a fusion, and uh, as an international DJ, it's very important you you find the uh, the common denominator mm -hmm. because there's a lot of division between the Caribbean, and the division with the Caribbean it transcends in the music. And it transcends to the people. And it's not wrong with being nationalistic about your island. Yeah. Love your country. Mm -hmm. But understand, soca music is one music. It's not Trini soca. It's not Grenadian. It's not Lucian. It's not, it's not you know, Dominican. It's, 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 it's soca as a whole. Mm -hmm. And if we understood that, you know, um, unity is strength. And you can have your friendly competition, but understand that if one soca music makes it through the gate, it's it's a win for everybody, and um, we need to come together as one island because, you know, as an international DJ, I'm gonna tell you straight up. If I go to your island, I will play play ninety to ninety percent of your island, but I'm going to play something from another island. Mm -hmm. it may be from Grenada, it may be from Trinidad, it may be from. I'm going to sprinkle in something. It may be even a remix that sounds like your island's music. Or it may just be something that I'm just saying, yo, y'all may not know this, but this was what's going on in Barbados. Mm -hmm. This was what's going on in St. Lucia. Just this was what's going on in St. Vincent. And it just kind of songs that carry over. As international DJs, we, we're going to take one from, from one island, sprinkle it, take up from the next island, sprinkle it, take up from the next island, sprinkle it. Mm -hmm. And then we have an understanding of everything. So, you know, some people don't understand that. And they be like, why are they bringing these international DJs there? And, or, you know, these international DJs are not, they're playing other music besides our music. That's us, like, planting seeds in different islands to bring us together. Yeah. Because if I just came and just played local music, why do you have your local DJs? Mm -hmm. Your local DJ is supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm never trying to replace a local DJ. Mm -hmm. You want that local, authentic sound? 
you are going to get that from your local DJs. Keep them on the lineup. You yes. Know, and, I, and, and, I, and I make friends with the local yeah. DJs because those are the guys that say, yo, Kevin, it's not just the top 10. Yeah. This is what's going, on, what's right? going on right now. You know, yeah. this is what's going on in the streets. The garrison, they saying this. Yeah. The industry, the radio is saying this. But if you want that special forward, it's this, these songs. So we're never going to replace the local DJs. The, the, the international DJ is going to sound more worldly. It's gonna be more, more, more like what is that? Yeah, that's not what you know. What yeah, I'm saying more so, curiosity is, right? Yeah, yeah spark exactly. Yeah. Spark your because you see when you said spark your curiosity because there are some times where I play a, a song or a rhythm and people kind of just I don't know this song, so but then it's like and and we as carnival travelers know yeah. that easily. You could go somewhere on Friday and. You never hear a song, and by Monday, that's your favorite song. Yeah. Oh, I love this one because it's so, so so so. But the first time you was just like looking around, and then maybe you play a song. It's just like a pocket of people going crazy, mm. and you're like, "Yo, what song is it? you tell your friend? Yo, what song is this? Mm -hmm. Yo, I don't know, but it, maybe we should learn, learn it. And then you learn it, and then the four days later, you become those people that would jump into the song, like, "Yeah." too so you know you gotta as a dj you gotta understand that sometimes people are processing something mm -hmm. but also as a as a as a party patron because pe people will say oh you guys are always playing the same stuff that's why you, how you know it through the repetition yeah you know what i mean so yeah you in a weekend you're gonna hear the same stuff yeah. you know but then you gotta understand think about it if a dj came and said I'm going to play a whole bunch of stuff that is great mm -hmm. in one part of the world. You guys don't know it yet. And you spent an hour on processing. Mm -hmm. Just, just, oh, I don't know this. I don't know this. I don't know this. I don't know this. I'm getting disconnected. He's not playing for me anymore. Yeah. So there has to be a balance of something that's familiar mm -hmm. to keep the people in. Oh, I, I know this. So you spring a little old, a little top 10, a little new. You know, and you, you, you make an experience. And, and, you know, Caribbean people love to complain, but, <laughs> you know, they still come. Yeah. So, you know, um, and, 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 and DJs, some of the DJs, they, they kill the creativity just because they do not want to, I don't want them to talk about me. Yeah. Not even disappoint. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want them to talk about me on social media. Got it. Yeah. I don't want to get posts on this blog site. So I'm not going to do it. I'd be like, shut up. They worry about what other people are Yeah, say. Like, like, I mean, I, I mean, at the end of the day, you do have, you know, guys that the crowds trust a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, well, well, Kevin, it might do something different. But that's our guy or, you know, whoever. So you got to play, play your position and just understand that, yo, I am the guy that's going to play this for you. And two months from now, you're going to love it. Uh, yep. And I have the confidence to know that while you guys are processing this, the next record I'm coming with is going to blow you away. Blow yeah. you away. So you got to, you got to, you know, you got to have to have the experience to know that this record is going to go like this mm -hmm. and then you're going to go like this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why you spend that time um, traveling. Yes. And, and getting, learning. And learning. Yeah. Never stop learning. Mm -hmm. I'm still a student, a student of the game. Always. I'm still, I'm still gonna, I'll go to any DJ. Yo, what song is that? I don't care who it is. Yo, if it's, if, even if he played, he didn't play that good. <laughs> and he played something, I'm like, yo, what song is that? You know, I'll look, I need, give me that. Yeah. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, it's funny, like, some DJs don't share music. Mm -hmm. Some are very, like, like gatekeep. Yeah, they, they don't gatekeep. Like... And I'm not, I'm talking about like a remix. If you made a remix and you worked on something or you, 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 that's your thing. But I'm talking about a regular song. Like, if, if, if somebody hears, hears me play like some Grenadian soca, yo, I need them songs. I need those two songs. No, you don't need those two. You need 20. Take it all. You need, you need, you need this. Let me give you this year, last year, I'm going to give you the classics so you have a whole set. Yeah. You know why? Because you're taking my culture. And you're gonna right. you're gonna spread it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So when I come back here, they're gonna know that it's not those just those two songs. They're gonna know everything. You know what I mean? So if you're say say you you represent Saint Lucia, and 
an international DJ comes over and this international DJ plays all over the world and you just play in St. Lucia, right? And the international DJ comes over and says, yo, I need, I need like those five songs. And you say, no, you're doing, doing a disservice to your whole culture mm -hmm. because that DJ could have took your five songs and played it all over the world. Mm -hmm. Now, Lucia, St. Lucia is everywhere you're not. Now, imagine if you tell the DJ, nah, you don't need five, you need 50. Yeah. And I'm going to show you, you know, why you need these 50. Mm -hmm. Now, he takes you. And, and, and this, it's funny because I had a, a, a St. Lucian DJ that I knew in, uh, in, uh, in New York. And he's asking for music. He'd be like, nah. True story then. Yeah. He's like, nah. <laughs> Oh, I'll give it to you in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Or oh, he, he, he play went, around it. He went actually. And then uh, I went to Saint Lucia, and a, and, and a DJ gave me everything. And I sat down for fourteen hours, learning. Cause Saint, Saint Lucia, you know, they have the French and the Creole, mm -hmm. so it's mixed in. Yo, what? I don't speak that. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, what is he saying? Yeah. What is he saying? What's this song mean? Yeah. What does that mean? What's this? And I and I and I, I learned it. Yeah. And now when I play Denry segment. They be like, yo. And the same thing goes for all the other islands. Yeah. You know, you study and you learn and you 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 make it a part of you because you could get a, a playlist and you could get it, but if you don't know those songs, you can't deliver it. Mm -hmm. You're not it is not a part of you. Mm -hmm. You you're just playing them. You know, but to deliver it and make it you have to study this and I've you know I've I've studied these things and yeah. I've and I've, 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 it's years and years now, and it's battle tested, and um, you know, it's uh, it's it's a great thing, you know, to uh, fuse the cultures together. Uh, I uh, I got love for the entire Caribbean, not just Grenada, not just Trinidad, not just Jamaica. I have love for it all, mm -hmm. and um, you know, um, I really would like to see, you know, our islands really embrace it all yeah you know it's yeah. very important i very think important. that mm -hmm. history also lies really deeply yes. within yeah. the yes. carnivals yes within the music artists Oof. it goes on and i think that's um that's something that we want to continue to see emulated as as generations grow and people like you are making I think, that happen yeah. i think um i think what you said as far as the history especially with carnivals you know um Carnival now is a, is, is, is a business. It's monetized. Mm -hmm. You know, the business of mass and uh, events. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it feeds a lot of people. It feeds me. Mm -hmm. It feeds my family. It feeds, you know, content creators, videographers, photographers, you know, security, bartender, dancers, um, um, people who, the, the costume designers, yes. um, you know, it, 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 the hotels, you know, the, the drivers. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it literally, it, it brings massive amount of money to the culture. Mm -hmm. But the cultural aspect, why we do it, why we play jab, why there's a juve, why there's carnival, what is this a celebration of? You know, the, uh, the connection to the slave trade, you know, the con connection to the celebration of freedom, mm -hmm. you know, the connection to um, intimidating the uh, slave masters. Why, why we, we put ourselves in the all black yeah, the all and putting on the horns and, and, and you know, it's, 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 it's a history that, um, you know, people need to understand. And, and, when you, and when you understand it, you got to understand, like, yes, this is an industry, but it's important to keep the culture alive. Mm -hmm. And this is why I keep it Caribbean. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I, I'm an open format DJ where I can play hip hop and R&B. And I actually love hip hop and R&B. You know, I love, you know, pop and Afro beats and all of that. But um, if you book me and I can't play Caribbean music, you know, I'm probably not. And people, people say, uh, you know, what about the EDM guys? You know, they're making millions. I want to make millions, but you know, I, I'm gonna put my Caribbean flair on it. Yeah. You know, put put you want you guys want to hire me for the, the EDM world. You know, you're gonna get a little Caribbean mix in there. You're gonna get a Caribbean yeah. some kind of Caribbean something in there. Yeah. In the EDM, so you know, I'm not saying you know I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna keep it Caribbean. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
I'm not going to just sell out my culture for monetary gain. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some people say, yo, you, you put me on an EDM stage, I'm a fist pump all day. I feel like yeah, I could do that, yeah. but I, I could be the guy that brings some 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 uh, Caribbean energy to it. Cause I think it, I think it, I think it'll be dope. I think it'll be dope to the Caribbean influence in the EDM world. Yeah, I think it'd be insane. I think so too. I think it'd be insane. I think it was it was happening, yeah. but people kind of shut it down mm -hmm. because I felt like I guess they were fi figuring the EDM was influencing the yeah. soca and not the other way around. They wasn't looking at the EDM going, the EDM soca going to the EDM world. Mm -hmm. They was looking at it coming to the soca world, and they kind of no, we don't want to hear that. We don't, we don't want it to sound like it. We want it to sound like the authentic soca. And I, I you know, yeah. you know, I, I get it, but I, I like the EDM stuff in the EDM world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it could, I, I feel like it could have worked, so. yeah. and it can work. It can. And, yeah, and so. I think yeah, you even mentioned how. Um, like the EDM world, right? Everyone has their own festivals, yes. carnival is its own thing. Yeah. So they almost divide between the genres and right. the way in which the music um, has their own audience. Yes. So, yes. but I agree with you in saying that spreading the love of culture, right. the Caribbean, and making that known. Yes. Across. Yeah, we gotta, I, you know, um, you know, I've, I've actually, uh, you know, I used to be the guy that, you, you know, go in the city and, you know, play the mainstream events and, you know, play, the, the the watered down where you're not playing nothing new you're playing just you know the classics that mm -hmm. everybody's the immediates mm -hmm. and you know you can't play the real stuff that's really you know I, I did that yeah and um you know after a while you would create pockets where you could do it but the crowd by and large I remember I was in a, a party and I was playing uh Afro beats, mm -hmm. and the girl came. You gonna play? You gonna keep? You gonna play reggae all night? She said. It's like first of all. Um, uh, okay. uh, <laughs> and and I think they wanted me to shout out this girl's birthday and play a Drake song. Okay. No disrespect to Drake, but you know what I had to offer was a cultural experience and he just wanted me to play music for them to pop bottles mm. to uh, drink and smoke hookah and I told the promoter I said you'll get that, that next DJ man and I cut my set short and I, I never I never took a booking like that again mm. you know because I, I felt you know when she came and said you know I was playing Afrobeats and she said you gonna play reggae all night and I had played soca and I think I transitioned to Afrobeats okay. and she was like you gonna play reggae all night and I was just this ain't, this ain't this is like, yeah. huh? You don't even know your genres. You're trying to tell me what to do. Like, this oh is my, my, God. This is my like, set. Yeah. Yeah, and it just is like, yeah. And Rocking you know, I, I, you know, a lot of times you don't want to be outright disrespectful, mm -hmm. but um, I think um, party patrons they take for granted that you know DJing is one of the biggest improv crafts there are. Improv is a huge word. You know, because yeah. when a comedian goes on, a comedian can do if improv, mm -hmm. but a lot of time they have sets they work through. Mm -hmm. An artist has a set, right? His song, he doesn't improv a song. He doesn't improv a set. The set is done. Bands work off of a set. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A keyboard, a drum is, uh, they, they work together, they practice. It's a set. DJs, yes, we can have sets, but a lot of times... We, we choose two songs and we kind of improv. I think party patrons take that for granted and they try to talk to us when we're doing that. You would never go and just outright have a conversation with a comedian, uh, somebody doing poetry, a vocalist, yep. somebody giving a speech, a, a guitarist, a drummer, a keyboardist, somebody. You would never try to talk to them when they're doing that. But they try to talk to DJs. We're. Hey, you're like, what? what? <laughs> and they're like, and I'm like, yo, if I, I talk to you, I'm going to miss my timing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to throw me off. Like, you know, so, they, 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 you know, I, I've developed this thing. I'm probably going to put it on a T-shirt where people come talk to me and I'm talking on the mic. I just be thinking and I'll be like, hey, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone.
Yeah. And I'll just look at them and go back to the way I'm doing it. And, and, and people don't, they, people, people laugh at it, but they, and people get mad. It's like, yo, you had opportunity to talk to me before I was on the set. Mm-hmm. You talk to me after. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's that important, go to somebody who has authority to talk to me. But you don't come up to me because a lot of times they're going to request a song that I'm going to play anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, you know it's going to come later. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. can you play Problem Child Holiday? Yeah. Like, no, I'm not going to play one of the biggest songs in the world. I'm not going to play it. <laughs> like, what are you t- You're going to, can, can you play, can you play Drift? Can you play, like, yeah. like you know it's going to come. If it ain't play already, I'm going to play it. Like, like this. Like, like you, if you want to just tell me what to play, you don't need a DJ. You need a Spotify playlist. Just put your Spotify and play don't what you want to play. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not iPod Shuffle over here. Like, yeah. <laughs> like enjoy the musical journey I'm going to take you on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is what I'm, I'm hired for. So I'm a, people say I'm a diva. Yeah. You know, uh, you know when I'm DJing, I, I could be a little divish, but I'm definitely. You know, you could take it as disrespectful, but I think it's disrespect for you to come and try to talk to me. When I am executing my craft in front of you, because if I mess up, then everybody's gonna say, "Yo, you heard that? Well, Kevin Crown playing like garbage," and it's simply because somebody tried to talk to me while I was doing my my craft, mm-hmm. you know. And it's it's uh, you know I think I think people need to keep that in mind For sure. when you're when you're approaching a DJ. Yeah. He's actually doing a craft. He's working. He's work. Live, yeah. and he could make a terrible mistake, and um, like you know, you speak for a living. Mm-hmm. Imagine where you're trying to interview me, and somebody's talking to you while you and, you, and be like, could you, "Could you shut up?" Because yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get my thought processes right. going as so they listen. People have to, done yeah. that. I'll say something, and they don't they disagree. With me. Nah, yo, you gotta nah, and they're right in my ear. I'm like, yo, shut up. Excuse me, shut up. Like shut like, up. I'm trying to do. Like, this. could you? Could yeah, you? Could yeah. you? Like, you want to talk? You want to come up here and do this? And then, like, like I was saying, mm-hmm. you know, it's, yeah, you know, it, 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 yeah, leave me alone. You know, I, I go yeah. with that a lot because yeah. they don't, I'm like, yeah, I'll just sing with the song. Leave me alone. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, it goes with the song and it's just like, yeah. what? It, but the person is like, oh, he's talking to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he won't go away. Or they'll be like, hey, they be like, I'm like, no. 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 I'm supposed to just leave, to leave the set and come and talk to you. No, no, not no, happening. it don't work yeah. like that. And then you know, um, you know, the big stages, the, the security, you can't even get close to us. So, but that's the reason, you know. But uh, yeah, that's uh, you know, people need to understand they we do. are, yeah. we are, uh, we are artists. We are, yeah. yeah. And you're when you're in the mode, you just mm-hmm. don't get in my way right now. Yeah, just please coming. move out my way. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> We're start singing. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, throughout your journey, mm-hmm. I know you've also had moments working with Jimmy Fox, mm-hmm. Wayne's Brothers. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to hear more about that. Yo, so Jamie Fox was in New Jersey. It was is a pool party, right? Okay. Um, I got the gig, mm-hmm. and it was a popular radio DJ, really popular radio DJ, okay. and everybody came out first. So it was going to be an opener who was also a radio DJ, then the big radio DJ, then me. So I remember the big radio DJ came out and he was, um, everybody was excited. Phones came out and then uh, he played for maybe like an hour and a half. He, it was boring. (laughs) It it was, it wasn't good. I want to say it was, but whatever. It wasn't good. We don't need any names. Yeah. 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 You just knew. He sat, he, the crowd was dead. Jamie Mm -hmm. sat down in the section. Everybody, and then I came on and. You know, I started talking, and and I and it was cool because I, I was doing the Caribbean, and I got Jamie up, and I said, "Yo, you know how to dance the reggae music?" And we started teaching him <laughs> the dances, and he was um filming the Django at the time, so he had a beard, so he's kind of all. I have the picture too. I have the picture somewhere. Yeah. But um. Was your phone over there? Yeah. It was the one, it's probably the one ringing off the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a fact, right? <laughs> right. Okay, let me see if I have this picture. It should be in my favorites. But I have the picture, and he has the, the, the Django beard, right? Let me just uh, scroll. And, you know, he, he started um, dancing. And uh, I remember after I was done, the uh, promoter said, yo, you never get on radio. So what? Hmm. what are you talking about? Me? 
He was like, yeah, what are you talking about? He was like, and I was aspiring to be on radio at the time. He was like, you never, he was like, you don't even know what you just did. You just upstage, da 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 I was like, I wasn't trying to do that. But yo, it was, he was like, yo, it was really good, but you just made him look very, very bad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, you know, but it was, it was a, it was a, it was a great moment. Um, you know, with me and Jamie, Jamie Foxx and, uh, Wayne's brothers, you know, they had came to the club that I was playing at and they used to call that, that spot where I was every, they used to call it the Kevin Crown show. So okay. I used to play from, for like four hours <laughs> by myself and, uh, it was absolutely insane and uh they were there and they was having a good time and mm. you know they you know it wasn't i wasn't an industry dj i was just a dj dj and sometimes when they don't know you mm -hmm. you know their unbiased opinion about you is great because you know they could say you was bad and it's of no consequence because you literally nobody to them yeah. you know what i mean but um you know when you get that compliment and say yo you're you was good and you was you know it was amazing and yo you're dope dj and I, I've been getting that all my life from, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of my DJ heroes and a lot of the guys I looked so up to. so many photos I thought I did. Yeah, I, 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 I'm like, yo, this guy is still like, scrolling I'm looking at myself talking. DJ Khaled. I'm looking, you know, I could tell because my hair is just getting yeah. shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. That's how I know I'm going to. Yeah. Yes, right. There That's me go. and Jamie Foxx right there. Oh, my. Yeah, see, 2012. Yeah, right. You see him with the beard. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And he, you were teaching him all the, the all dance the dances, moves. Yeah, I think. I think I have him. That's a pond river. He's, he's looking oh. at me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, that was cool, that. man. Yeah, it was cool. It was um it was a moment that uh that uh you know and then I had a t shirt. Okay. It said natural born club killers. Mm. And I remember this dude, man, this industry dude, man, white dude, man, came to me. He looked at me and my friends, because those three of us had it on. It's like natural born club killers. That's awesome. And he walked away. <laughs> I trademarked it like like two days later. I trademarked it. That's you now. I trade I trademarked it and I was just like, you know, the nat I went from natural born club killer, you know, and because I just do a lot of clubs, but then I started doing a lot of stage shows. Mm -hmm. And the club, you know, it was not a, a show. First of all, a carnival truck, a, a, a stage show with artists, a show, and you know, is not a club. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, I came up with the energy godson. Okay. Cause everybody said, "Yo, your energy is crazy." Yeah. And um, Elephant Man, who's the energy god? Yeah. Cause people say, "Yo, energy. He's the energy god. He's stealing Elephant Man's name." And it was funny. I was like, "Yo, you know who called me? The energy god, son. Elephant Man. Cause he'd be like, yo, yo, Kevin Crumb, Kevin, <laughs> you are the energy Jesus. <laughs> Nobody don't have energy like you, Kevin. Kevin, let me tell you something. You." Are the most energy in the world, Kevin. Kevin, you are the selector. So, so <laughs> you, you know, down <laughs> so so you know who's Jesus? Yeah. That's God's son. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to be like I'm the energy Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I said I'm the energy God's son. God. So when people think I, I stole it from Elephant Man, Elephant Man is actually who mm -hmm. who actually gave me the title. The you're the energy Jesus. So <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. So um, yeah, I love so that. yeah, so I actually have it on. Um, I have it like um, what you call it, and it's uh, it's it's great, man. Like one thing that stood in particular, Little John from the East Side Boys. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> he, during the, the pandemic, he he used to watch my show mm -hmm. on Twitch, and he reached out to me and said, "Yo, um, I'm having a birthday birthday live stream, and I want you to play on it." And I was like. How you saw me, he sent me this voice note. I still have the voice note. And he said, yo, I watch you whenever I can. Because on Twitch, you could be in the chat, mm -hmm. but you could just watch without people knowing. You could just click the link, and you could just watch from a browser. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people watch from the browser, so you don't know who's watching you. Mm -hmm. He said, I watch you whenever I can. He said, and when it comes to the Caribbean music, he said, in my opinion, you're the best in the world. He said, "You just don't do the Caribbean. You do the African. The you know, you do." He and he, I, have, I have that voice note as well. Lil John. Yeah, Lil John, hmm. saying, "Yo, you. I, I feel like you're the best in the world, and I need to have you on this stream." Yeah. And I'm just like, "Wow, wow. you know." And then you know, like, huh. it's it's uh, you don't let it go to your head. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, you still always you got to be your best critic. Yeah. You got to be your, your your you have to critique yourself and always say. You know, this was good, but I could have did this better. Mm -hmm. I do this well, but I could do it better. Mm -hmm. 
you know. Um, so there's a lot of things that, you know, I try to work on mentally mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, just, just to make my performance better, you know. Um, you know, obviously when it, you know, when it's theme oriented, I dress up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go a little bit above and beyond. I put on costumes. But that's just me, that's man. You. That's you. You know, I, I like... Uh, I like giving people an experience, and I feel like um, if the the party patrons uh, dress up in theme, mm -hmm. I think as the person entertaining them, I think I owe it to them as well to be in theme sure. with them. You know, I think that makes that experience better. It makes my job easier yeah. when I'm in theme. Also. People get excited about it, right? Yeah, when they like, see, I think I think now they 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 kind of yo, I wonder what Kevin's gonna look like. <laughs> you know, uh, for my costume party, you know, I. Uh, I did an outfit change. And oh, it was, it was it was like awesome. Fancy. I could I'll show you the video. A little yeah. bit. it was, you know, it looked like a movie, man. Yeah. And um, I guess I guess because of the martial arts, mm -hmm. I'm always trying to be like some action based yeah. kind of like superhero type. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I don't never do like the funny costumes. Mine no. is always like I'm an action guy. Yeah. You know, I'm always like a, you know. I'm superhero, kind superhero, of, yeah. kind of masculine, strong kind. Your godson. Of. Yeah, yeah I, I never, <laughs> I never did like a funny costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, there's guys that do the hilarious, hot I, yeah. I do the, I do the cool like um, action mm -hmm. Marvel, DC. Uh, put me in yeah, action yeah, type yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's just me, man. I have fun with it, and uh, I really. I really love doing it. it. It makes me good. It makes me feel good. A couple more things yeah. you spoke about action movies and yeah. acting. How how is that? Actually, it was in a movie. Yeah. I was in a movie. I was in a Jamaican Mafia in okay. 2015. Yeah. And uh, I do... Uh... DJs are actors, man. Yeah. I, DJs are the MCs. I mean, the MCs that... They, they, we're actors. Right now, we're kind of acting in a way. We're actually very But, yeah, yeah. but you know, you, you, yeah. you're, you're very... You know, you're very... Cause, cause a lot of a lot of times you got to turn on that energy, you mm -hmm. got to turn on that smile and turn on that enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. No matter what's going on, no matter if you're in pain, if you're if you're tired, if you're going through relationship issues, right. I know people can relate with that. Oof. You know, you can't go on there if you just had a fight with your your girlfriend or you know you you you, you can't go on there with that energy. You got to instantly <sighs> turn it on. Yeah. And you know that's you know you put, you you're not being fake, but you mm. you you're putting on an act, and um you know yeah acting I've um uh, I have a I have a liking liking for acting yeah. as well, you know um, just uh you know reading scripts and learning scripts, you know it's good. My daughter's actually an actor too. I love that. She's been in a couple of small films. Okay. You know, one got nominated for a Grammy, I believe. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's, she's carrying the torch yeah. as well. But, um, yeah, man, um, you know, like like I said, I um, just funny meeting Jamie Foxx. How Jamie is so multi-talented. Mm -hmm. I probably, probably would, probably, I'm the DJ equivalent of Jamie. Okay. I, I, you know, I actually did a song. Shout out to Mr. Killer. Mm -hmm. We did a song, Follow Me, this year. So I did like that's my first. I did a lot of features where I did intros and mm -hmm. like the DJ Khaled stuff where you intro or ad lib, but actually doing parts on the song yeah. was new to me. So I did that. So you know I have that under my belt. You know, mm -hmm. doing a song. You know, uh, did the, the com comedy thing, acting, DJing, hosting, radio broadcasting, interviewing. Mm -hmm. You know, interviewing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and just even like the tech side. I'm very I'm like a tech nerd. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about cameras. Yeah, yeah, and, like the cam, know, the, like uh, the lighting, the audio, the, the lighting. Like, uh, I understand, I understand the soft boxes, the even lighting, this lighting right here. I, I even understand, um, like the tone of light and the yeah. shade of light. You know why we use these things, and um, I think as a, uh, just as an entertainer, you need to always learn. Yeah, you need to always be a student of the craft and understand, you know why. You know, do people do what you do? And then you can recognize greatness. Mm -hmm. You can recognize um, who's mediocre from who's, you know, you know, you know, like. Um, who's Kevin yeah. Crown? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not even just me, just the people you work yeah. around with. Mm -hmm. Because you, 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 you also judge by who you associate with. It's true. Yeah. So if you, if you say you're, you're a quote unquote big entertainer, mm -hmm. but you have a cameraman and, and then the media team looks at your camera. 
cameraman and he's like, yo, he's using a load of crap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, we, you, you can make magic happen with certain things, but after a while, it's just like, you're going to look at somebody like, yeah. you know, if you're on a major stage and somebody's just using an iPhone, mm-hmm. you're going to be like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, where's the big guy? Yeah, You know, yeah, but yeah. Ver- versus somebody has an iPhone, but then he has a big rig, he has a drone and he's giving people an iPhone yeah. and he has this and he has a 360 camera yeah. and he's like, he's micing and he's thinking, then you're like, nah. I want to see that video. Mm-hmm. That video is going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. This guy is on his... You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, uh, you, you know, you definitely... You don't want to be, you know, the elite am, am, amongst a bunch of lames. Yep. You don't want to sur- surround yourself with a bunch of lames. So it's very important to associate yourself with people who... who the same caliber. It's kind of yeah. the same level of understanding. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to associate yourself with greatness to be considered great. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Next five years, um, expanding on my uh, businesses outside of, uh, of music. Um, definitely uh, more production, mm-hmm. more music. I, I, I think uh, as far as uh, my entertainment aspect of what I do on stage, you know, taking it to the next level, uh, really, really bringing a show. You know, uh, my last birthday party I actually had backup dances. Okay. And we were actually practicing, you know, so I want to implement that more where promoters and there's not just booking me. You know, you guys got to fly in the team. So you got to, you got to fly in my back. See, there we go. Let me get it. Yeah, you got to fly in, you got to fly in the team. You know, if you want that show, yeah, you got to, you got to fly in my backup dances. You got to, you know, we're going to, we're going to give you a show. You know, so like one of my uh, inspirations and my mentors is Marshall Montana. Mm-hmm. And the same kind of professional professionalism and showmanship he brought to soca music. Mm-hmm. Nobody's really matched that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I want to bring that to what I do. Yeah. You know, um, why not? Why not? You know, yeah. why not? Because last year at my birthday party, the event planner had dancers, but she didn't tell me. And we wound up dancing on stage, mm-hmm. but because we didn't plan anything, it was kind of improv. Yeah. So this year I said, nah, we got to hire you. You're going to get, you're going to get the costumes. We're going to do a little routine and, you know, it worked out, you know, and it's just like, yo, if we could do that for my event, we could do, we could duplicate that mm-hmm. and just show value. And then people are like, yo, when Kevin comes out, it's a whole production. Yeah. And that's my, that's my my where I see myself I don't see my I don't, I don't want to limit myself mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't want to just be on the ones and twos you know um, I think we could, fours and fives. I want to <laughs> I'm going to be I, you know if I'm on the ones and twos I want to I want to be just like the flair of an EDM show yep. where it's not just a DJ just DJing and people just it's a show it's an experience I want to oh. when I'm on the stage I want to give people that experience mm-hmm. you know and um you know, uh, you know, break the mold yeah. of what a DJ should or can be. I think I've already done that. I think so too. I and think I've, but I want to keep going. Yeah, and you definitely will be. I also want to highlight that you've spoken so many words and pieces and sound bites that everyone's going to take from this and, mm-hmm. and learn from. But is there a particular message that you want to give to anybody who's, who's up and coming or, or looking up to you? Well, I, you know, I have a lot of sayings. Mm-hmm. One saying is, um, don't stress what you can't control. Okay. And you can't control people. Yeah. But you can control yourself. Well, it, go, it really goes like this. Don't stress what you can't control. And you can't control people. Especially stupid people. <laughs> but you can control yourself. Okay. Right? Okay. Once you say that to yourself, in stressful situations, 90% of what you are stressed about will disappear. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people stress about what people think about them, what people say about them, mm-hmm. what, you know, what people are doing, right? When you say, well, you can't stress what you can't, you can't control people, that stress disappears. Mm-hmm. Or, 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 another thing I also always say, if you're not evolving, you're dissolving, Ooh, right? Good. When you, when, 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 when you're always evolution based, you never sit still and you never become complacent. You never say, well, you know, I'm one of the top DJs in Caribbean in the world right now. So I, I'm going to just sit on my ass and just get booked. Yeah. And I'm, just, I'm not going to work on my craft. When you, when you have that, I'm, I'm, I have to evolve. 
I have to learn something. I have to be, I have to, whether it's editing video, editing pictures, um, 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 learning something, mm -hmm. learning a new genre of music, learning how to remix, mm -hmm. learning something about something, you evolve and you always become better. So once you evolve, you dissolve, meaning if you don't evolve, say um, Kevin is 10 steps ahead of it. I'm not saying I am, but just saying hypothetically, Kevin is 10 steps ahead of the average DJ. Mm -hmm. If I become complacent and then don't keep moving, eventually they're going to catch up to me, right? Yeah. Then they're going to surpass me and I dissolve. Mm -hmm. So once, if you're 10 steps ahead, keep moving. You stay 10 steps ahead. Yeah. But while you're ahead, it's your responsibility to give back. Mm -hmm. That's how you stay good with the universe. You can't be selfish. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't learn something. Or even if you're, you, 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 um, you, you, you develop something or you're the originator of something. It's important as a master to make your champions. Yes. You know what I mean? If you originated something, why did you do it? You can't because if it, when it stops, it stops at you. Because if you, if you, if you, if you give it to the world, it lives on forever. Yeah. And what you put out. Yeah. So you, you, so, so a lot of guys, like I, I, when I was streaming and I was telling everybody, yo, this is how you get clean audio. Because when I was streaming, I, that when, when the, the, the beginning of the pandemic, those first couple of weeks, you saw all the DJs streaming with their phones, mm -hmm. bad lighting, bad backgrounds, uh, uh, terrible audio. You know, you saw all of that. Mm -hmm. When I came on, I had good, good audio. Yo, why does this sound like a SoundCloud mix? Yeah. Yo, why does this studio look like this? And I, I started telling people, and guys would say, yo, why are you telling everybody this? You got to keep some of it for yourself. I was like, I didn't invent none of this. No. And they're going to they're gonna learn it anyway. Right. If they do, they do diligence. So why not share it? Mm -hmm. and I, so when you share those things, you know, it kind of keep. I believe in karma. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, karmically, is that a word? Karmically? Karma. Yeah, yeah. Karma. I think so. yeah, yeah. Karmically, yes. I think <laughs> karmically, you, you stay right with the universe. And I'm just a natural, I'm a, I, it, it, it's, it's hard for me not to share something. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me, like, to see a DJ and, and know that, yo, if you play this song right now, it's going to go crazy. Or if you say this right now, it's hard for me not to share. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard for me not to, to sometimes I gotta say, no, nah, Kev, you, you do that, say that for yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so I'm a natural person who wants to see, I just like to see good things happen. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard for me not to share these things. So... You know, when I saw people like, yo, you need to buy this and do this and do this and you'll get the good audio. And you need to, yo, you need to light your background. Clean up your background, man. You look like you're DJing in your kitchen. Your kitchen could be anything you want it to be. Yeah. Just clean it up. Yeah. Like, yo, I don't, I don't have a lot of space. You don't need a lot of space. Mm -hmm. You know, you need what you, you know. And, and, you know, I started telling people about green screens. You know, you don't, you don't need a green screen. Just buy a green tablecloth. <laughs> it's the same anything, thing. Yeah. And then just... Don't tack it. Yeah. And, you know, light it up. And, you know, I started sharing it with the world. And, you know, um, you know, people started springing up. And uh, obviously I did a little bit more with my setup. When you see my setup, it's kind of like, damn. Yeah. This guy is crazy with it. Your time. And but, yeah, you, just, it's, it's, you know, you, that's the 10 steps uh, ahead. Yeah. So then you think, you know, I, I've, I, you know, I remember the day I figured out. I can record myself and then on a green screen and then put that, that recording of me live on the screen so it looks like it's two of me live. Mm -hmm. I remember I did that and people were like blown away. How is, how is he doing this live yeah. when one was recorded? That's dope. Yeah, I did that. I remember doing that and I, and I remember I kept saying that's so f effing awesome. That is. I saw one of those. I was like, yeah. how, how, yeah. how did he do that? Yeah. And it was like, yeah, it was, it was, you know, or I would, um, I would, I'd had the artists come by my crib mm -hmm. and they were in another room and I made it look like they were in front of me, but they were in another room next to me and they were performing and I was DJing and they were in front of me. You know, we did all of that. That's so dope. You know, and it was, uh, you know, a lot of times I did it by myself, yep. you know, um, like, like as the production was going on, mm -hmm. you know, people have a room of, you know, key grips and this and that. I was doing it all by myself. And uh, yeah, all well, that makes makes me like a better uh, entertainer mm -hmm. because when you do have people doing it for you and you could just 
just be the creative. It's it's so much better. You don't have to worry about the camera. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't yeah. have to worry about the sound. You don't have to worry about the lighting. You know, just You've you got just it perform. All. And then in those instances, when you look back at the video, you're like, yo! I remember when I performed at the Barclay Center, and mm -hmm. you can't see the big screens. And, you know, it, it, it turned out to be 20,000 people. When I saw those... Um, those videos and posts, I said, yo, oh my God. You did that. I was like, wow. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a great experience to actually see it. And I, I, I would love for every DJ who aspires to, to, to get on that level, to actually reach that level and actually see it mm -hmm. because um, go through a lot. And, you know, for a long time when your uh, doors get closed in your face or, you know, um, you know, people don't present the opportunities or this opposition. You become bitter because mm -hmm. you feel like you deserve it, mm -hmm. and you feel like you should be there. And when you're not there, you become bitter. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody likes a bitter entertainer. Nobody wants nobody to come on the stage. Yo, you know, a lot of people don't like me, but <laughs> you, that's you, the first thing. You, 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 you know, yeah, a lot yeah. of people hate on me, but, but I'm here to play. Yeah, and, you uh, know, but they be hating yeah. on me. Nobody don't want to hate. Nobody give nobody shit. Cares. Nobody yeah. hears. Nobody cares you know nobody cares about that nobody cares that and you shouldn't even speak that into existence mm -mm. you should be like yo so many i love you guys because so many people show me so much love i just want to bring it give it all back because yeah. at the end of the day if you know you don't got no haters you're not doing something right mm -hmm. you know and you don't give the haters the energy you know because as much as for every one person that hates you there's probably like a thousand That's people that love, love you so why are you giving the energy to the haters Give the energy to you. Know, thank you for the support. Yeah. Forget the. I don't even worry about the haters. No. Thank you for the support. Exactly. Thank you. You know, instead of addressing the haters, just thank thank your supporters and grow your grow your community. Yeah. And you'll be fine. Thank yeah. you. No problem. That was that was a perfect segue to to wrapping this up and concluding. Thank you. And thank you. I really appreciate you no sharing problem. your story, your time, and, and you. all that you spoke about today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think I have a lot. To talk about, man. Uh, you guys, you guys are the creators, cu curators of our legacy. Yeah. Because this is on film. This will be here forever. It will. My children can watch this. They will. Yeah, it'll be dope. And we'll look at this in five years yeah. and remember. Yeah. And, Yo, and our, here. Right? And, you know, I'll be my backup dancers on yes. private jet. Yes. Private jet. It's happening. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have private jet too. The private jet. What? What is? What's gonna? What are you gonna have decked out on it? Do you have plan to have any art or? I don't know if I want to own it. Oh, I just want to be on it. On it. Okay. Because owning it is a lot. It's a lot. It is. I just want to be on it. Uh, yo, Kev, we sent you the private jet. All right. And I'm like, okay. yeah, we out. With your backup dancing. You know, we, yeah, that, yeah. that, 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 that. Yeah, that could, could happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Private jet. <laughs> right now, I'm trying to just, 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 just kind of really to hammer home the first class clause. Yes. I'm trying to, I'm trying to really hammer it at home now. Got like, it. Got it. First class for Kevin Crown when he. Trying to get that done. <laughs> <laughs> trying to try to show them. It's a prog home. It's a process, and you. Yeah, you gotta show so. you're worth it. Yeah. Like why? <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank no you, problem. Thank you. thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. Kevin Crown Music, all social media. That's it. On the Melissa Show. <laughs> thank you again for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you haven't already, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel, as well as follow us on Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts.